couple of minor updates to the studio today. I need to get some like light in here because that's yeah. Needs to be brighter. That's better. So what I'm thinking for that wall is center the frame. The couch isn't perfectly centered, but I think the picture being centered would look a lot better. But now I just have to uh I have to find the center of the wall. inches. 35.5 should be the dead center of said wall. I should just need one nail because of the little frame right here. And also if we do, when we get a more expensive frame, I'm going to use picture wire, like metal picture wire. So I'll just still need the one, the one nail. This frame's also plastic, so if it does fall, I'm not, I'm not too worried if it breaks. Does that look good? Also, I'll have you know, this will be the sloppiest uh, job you'll ever see me do. Literally, I'm using this crappy little nail and I'm not even looking for studs just because it's a temporary thing and I just I really want to hang it up so <sighs> sloppy I think that's a uh, I think that's center I'm gonna check before before I call it good All right, the, uh, the second and last project is gonna be this. So do you see this really crappy fire hazard looking thing right there? I'm looking to remedy it with this today. It's, uh, it's one of the nice things about having a standing desk. I can just, it's great. I, uh, I think that looks better. At least I'm not using this thing. That was a new, this is a new low for me. Okay, so what I think I wanted to do today, and honestly, because I'm going to be doing it anyway, is I wanted to kind of walk you through how I start Premiere Pro project. I know when I started with Premiere Pro, it was kind of daunting, especially because I never classified myself as a video person. I always classified myself as a musician that had to learn the software to basically market myself. The video is going to be directed towards somebody like that. Like, obviously, if you're a video person and you pick something up, then that's that's great. But this is targeted specifically for the, the musician that wants to learn to kind of up their production game uh, for like Instagram or YouTube or, or whatever else. Obviously this applies to more than that, but that's like my, my th that's my thought process for making this, this video. So when you create a project in Premiere Pro, this is what's gonna pop up. The right you have like your effects and your how you edit clips and just everything else, like graphics, all that stuff. And then to your left, this is where you can import media and you'll see once you, once I import the media, then there's gonna be more information displayed on the screen. Right now it's just a blank template basically. So to import media, I'm just going to hover my cursor over this little box to the left, double click. And then I'm gonna go to my T7. This is where I have all my footage stored, you can tell. You can see all the uh, <laughs> recent vlogs that I've done. Go to the most recent one, go to raw, and then import. Once that is imported, I'll go ahead and double click on it. So these are basically individual clips. So if I double click on this, this will be the preview for that clip. A quick little hack that I like to do that makes my workflow a little bit faster is I like to be able to see the little the preview of the clip within this box. It makes it, I can pick, I can just locate clips a lot more efficiently. So to do that, instead of having this selected, you're gonna go one over and go to icon view. Click on that. And now, if you scrub through, you'll be able to see like just a quick clip. 
of all of this. So yesterday's vlog started with me talking about my moon gels. So what I'm gonna do is just, I, I shoot everything in sequential order. So I'm just gonna start from the very first clip and work my way through the entire project. Now I'm gonna do a couple of things to make this less gray and mushy and to actually process the audio like efficiently. The way Premiere Pro works is there's, there's bins or folders and right now I'm in the folder with all of my main camera footage which is what this camera shot. So to get out of this folder what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna I'm gonna take my cursor to the left and go to project which is right here click on that and if I wanted to open it up that would be where all my clips are too. There's honestly with Premiere there's a bunch of different ways to access things. It's kind of like Pro Tools in that way. Uh, this is just how I do it that makes sense to me. So now that I'm back at this like this home page or where all my master folders are I'm going to create something called an adjustment layer. That's going to create a layer and every every uh, clip that's underneath that layer is going to be adjusted. To do that I'm going to go over to this little new item thing. Click on it. Adjustment layer. And so these are the video settings that the adjustment layer is going to have. And when you drag, the reason I drug my first clip in before I made the adjustment layers, because when you drag a clip in, the first, when you drag the first clip in, Premiere Pro is automatically going to set your entire timeline to those parameters, which is what I want because this is my main camera. This is okay. I'm gonna drag one adjustment layer two adjustment layers and I'll explain why in a second. What This is called color grading and basically what color grading is is it takes this gray mushiness and makes it look like the picture that you're looking at right now. Um, I'm shooting in something called S-Log3 and basically any kind of log profile is going to give you more flexibility in posts to fix things like let's say like something was way blown out or super super dark that's gonna let you give you more ability to kind of save that clip which I've done a, a couple of times it's helped me salvage some really crappy uh, shooting <laughs> so this first adjustment layer I'm gonna go up to one of my presets so I go to effects presets and then go to the s-log3 preset and just drag it on boom and then since I'm in this preset, I'm gonna go ahead and grab this mic pre preset and drag it onto the audio clip, which is right there where the squiggly lines are. And now I have like some heavy compression, but it, it makes it sound it makes it sound more uniform and if you're a drummer or you record anything, you know what compression does. That's basically what I'm doing. I'm adding a compressor. And then so I have this adjustment layer as my conversion LUT if you want to call it that and now the second layer is going to just kind of tighten things up a little bit using another LUT. So to do that I'm going to go to this thing that says Lumetri Color, click on it and when you open this up you'll see a couple of different subfolders. There's basic correction, creative, curves, all that stuff. I'm going to go to the creative tab, click on that and then it says look right here. I'm gonna, that's where I'm going to put the, the look LUT. Video assets. All right, y'all kind of notice this looks kind of crappy and crazy. And that's because it's way too intense. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go to the intensity and bring it down to 20%. <laughs> it's a funny face. So if I toggle this on and off, you'll kind of see what it's doing. It's just kind of making the blacks blacker and just it's just tightening everything up. These two adjustment layers are good and I'm not going to touch them for the rest of the project. So I'm literally just going to drag this out to like 24 minutes and then hit these lock buttons, meaning that anything that I do to this timeline, these are going to remain untouched, which is what I want because they're just they're they're set and they're good. All right, now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to chop this audio up and kind of get it as concise and as I want what I'm saying to be communicated concisely, clearly, and just easy to understand. So that's what I'm going to do right now. So if you kind of look, the this is all the same shot, but this part right here, this lighting looks good. But then I go to this clip right here and it looks a little dark. So what I'm going to do to adjust that is click on the individual clip right here, go to basic correction, and I'm just gonna bring the shadows up just a little bit. When I'm adjusting clips, that's gonna be 90% of what I do is I'm just gonna be adjusting the shadows or the highlights. I rarely touch the exposure unless something's way underexposed. But uh, typically, my white balance and my exposure are pretty, they're, they're what I want when I'm shooting, so I never have to really touch those unless, like I said, something went kinda weird. All right, so I have my first scene like done. 
Now what I'm gonna do, and this kind of varies depending on how I'm feeling that day, I'll either pick audio beforehand or I'll pick audio after the fact. For this, I kind of want the, the intro to kind of like be kind of like interesting, so <laughs> obviously. So I'm gonna put a little bit of a, like some kind of sound something and then have it kind of cut out and then towards the end, I'll bring the song back to kind of gain momentum uh, to kind of guide you to the, the next scene. I, I'm kind of in this phase right now of wanting to keep things super natural and super organic and I think a lot of times an easy way to fix that for me is just to not have any music. If what I'm saying is like the pace is correct because if the pace isn't correct then uh, that's just going to get really boring really fast. Alright so I've picked a song that I think is going to work well for the very beginning, it kinda, it's going to kind of create interest and intrigue and it'll help hook the, uh, the listener, the viewer in. Alright, so I'm going to have the song play as I'm like presenting the issue and then I'll slowly bring it back in so it'll sound something like this. So I was messing around with my drums the other day and I, I noticed there was some kind of, I have some unwanted sustain on that, that rack tom right there. So I decided to, to move the moon gel to like a different spot. And when I pulled it off, it left this, it left this really nasty residue. Like that's where it used to I like that, it kind of dumps you into a, <laughs> behind the drum set. Now I'm gonna just let that be natural. If I'm having it, the drums actually doing, but as a quick fix, it works great. But yeah, what is with that red? red? All right, and then I'll have it slowly come in because I finished my thought and now I'm just talking about something else and this will create, kind of create a natural uh, natural transition to the next scene that I'm doing something completely different. Fix. All right, now what I want to do, now that the that scene is over, I want to raise the song and I'm going to go into like some drone clips. So I'm going to do is I'm just going to raise the using keyframes and basically to do that is what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna double click on this audio and then where it says level right here, I'm gonna hit this little dot and that's gonna create a point to where I can adjust it. So I'm gonna hit spacebar and I'm gonna add another point and I'm gonna raise it up typically like five dB is typically where I found the sweet spot is. It's gross. And now I'm just gonna pull some drone clips in and that'll transition me to my next, to my next scene. All right, now I have some drone clips in here. I'm just gonna pull some in. And these are just drone clips, honestly, I got like a year and a half ago of, of downtown Nashville, because that's where most of my, well, that's where I live, so. <laughs> it helps transition you to a uh, another spot within like that city, if that makes sense. So now, once that's done, it's gonna raise up. It's gross. Oh, and now I have like a, that's a, that was a natural way to transition to a new scene within the video. All right, that's that's basically how I kind of get started. I'm gonna obviously sit down and I'll finish finish this, and then uh, I'll cut back up with you after after I do that. I have to focus now. All right, it's been a couple hours. I've had lunch, and I just finished putting my, my edit together. Now I'm just going to uh, render it and then export it. And basically rendering just like gets any like smooth transitions or anything that needs to be smoothed out, like smoothed out so it's not choppy after the fact, I think. I mean, I'm not completely sure what rendering does, but to my knowledge, that's kind of what it does. And after I export it, then I'll just upload it to a, to YouTube. The name of the game for this is just to streamline everything as, as much as you possibly can to keep it sustainable. Like sustainability is key and Anything that I can do to help sus make, make things more sustainable is a, it's a good thing. That's amazing. So a uh, little story time about that, that photo. I don't think I actually mentioned it. Uh, we were on vacation in Florida at a place in, in Destin and I, my family or my, my parents were with us and we happened to just go for a walk and the sky just looked super crazy on this little trail that we were on. It's actually an island, but it was like a trail on an, on an island. And I happened to, to have my camera, so I just snapped a quick picture and lo and behold, like a year and a half later, that uh, that's what's hanging above my... And the, the blues in the sky like matched the, uh, the pillow and it's just... It's very personal to me, so to see it in print, it's, it's cool.
I don't think I mentioned that. I didn't just buy it from like Home Goods or <laughs> something like that. Like that, I we actually took that picture, edited it, and then Savannah paid to print it, and surprised me with it. It's incredible.